Hi there everybody, welcome to my video on my attempts on repairing a water damaged Parrot Bebop 2 quadcopter. Water damage as in salt water damage, not fresh water damage. It probably would have been more likely a success with fresh water. But anyway, I acquired this from um, somebody who had given up on it basically, because um, I didn't think it would be worthwhile repairing, uh, which is pretty much true. But being that my profession is electronics engineer anyway, I thought, well, I might as well give it a go. So I took it all apart, thoroughly cleaned it with distilled water and then in alcohol, which you can see at the beginning of this video, the photos of that. Um, and then went on to seeing exactly what problems there were with the boards and the motors and everything else that was connected to it. Um, but I thought, well, I'll start with the easy bit first, which was the motors. All the bearings, well, pretty much all of my, I think, except one motor, the bearings were solid. They just didn't spin at all. So I removed all the cages off the motors, got the bearings out, um, and they was bearings that are quite easy to get hold of. So I've got another set of bearings for those. The windings themselves read OK. There was no corrosion on any of the windings that dissolved any of the coating on the winding itself. So I was hopeful that they would probably still be OK with new bearings in. Uh, then we moved on to the main board, um, which there was a terrible short on the main board. Um, and I thought, well, it's probably going to be the MOSFETs that probably blew when it hit the water. Um, so I removed all of them including the um, motor driver chips as well, which there were four of those. So I think in all it was about maybe something like 16 chips all in all I removed. Um, then read the board again and the short was still there, which I was a bit disappointed with. I was hoping it, it would just be in the MOSFET. Uh, but after a bit of patience and tracking down, I eventually tracked the fault down to the power management chip on the main board itself. Um, it's the chips next to the CPU and it's uh, filled in with what they call like underfill so I scraped the underfill off and then I actually used the heat gun removed the power management chip and underneath there was corrosion which I was a bit surprised about that but then again it's been sitting around for two or three months so one would assume eventually the corrosion just get its way through but the power management chip itself had a short on it uh, well, multiple shorts to be honest. Um, and with the chip off the board, the shorts around the area I was measuring disappeared, so I thought it pretty much nails that down. But unfortunately, to get hold of another one of them chips is uneconomical, and they're really difficult to get hold of anyway. And also, in the back of my mind, would be what other damage did that do when it went? If it surged, it would have sent a spike round, and the CPU I think runs off of 3.3 volts, so it wouldn't take much to destroy a lot of them chips. Um, but lucky enough, I did have another faulty board, but this one um, was much easier to repair. All it had wrong with it was one of the motor wires had sheared off, and also the Wi-Fi plug for one of the arrows on the board was completely sheared off as well. So the easy way around that was to take the plug off of the old water damage balls and the, and the wiring as well and fit them to this other board to get it up and running again. So once I soldered all that back together, fitted all the casing back, uh, put some more he um, heat sink stuff on there, I can't remember the name of it now, but anyway heat sink compound on and put it all back together and then I moved on to fitting it back into the drone and hooking everything back up. After I'd done all that, um, turned it on and I was greeted with a red flashing light. And I thought, mm, uh, it wasn't even um, getting to the stage where it was transmitting the Wi-Fi, because I was checked on the free flight app and there was no Wi-Fi either. So I thought it's, it's got stuck somewhere, probably due to a fault with one of these other components that I fitted either the fan underneath, the main camera unit, the GPS unit, or the downward facing camera. Um, so I thought we'll have to be, take a bit off at a time and see what happens. Anyway, once it was all back together again, powered it on and I was just greeted with a red flashing light. 
it wasn't even making it to the uh, Wi-Fi stage and I did expect to hear the motors twitch or something when you when you first turned it on and I was getting none of that either um, so anyway a bit of searching around I found out that one of the things the uh, Bebop does on power up it actually checks things like the barometer um, and I should imagine it checks all the sensors um, but the GPS board itself once I took it all off and re-examined it because I thought there's it, it, a good chance that it could be that uh, there was a dead short on the GPS board as well which surprised me because that that board was probably one of the boards that was in the better condition out of the salt water damage it hardly had anything on that so I was a bit surprised at that but the short was on the um, VCC power in um, which went to the U-Blox chip um, so what I've done was I removed the chip with a hot air gun, just took the chip totally off, plugged the ball back in, switched it on, the, the flashing red light stopped, the main red light come on, I had the, the four bleeps from the motors, and then the fan fired up. Um, I reconnected the, sorry, not reconnected, I started up the free flight app, and the Wi-Fi was showing, so I connected to the Wi-Fi, and then into the free flight itself, and press connect on that and lo and behold the video popped up and I was quite surprised at that um, so obviously the, the camera is quite well sealed so the water probably never got in it because um, when I was checking trying to clean around it um, I was expecting the metal on the back I thought you'd probably just peel that it. it's like stuck on or something like with double sided tape or something um, but it wasn't it was almost it was really on there solid and I thought I wonder if it's it was sealed well enough that water won't have got in there anyway as it turned out the camera worked perfect there was nothing wrong with the camera at all um, so I was quite happy about that um, and the drone had booted up and of all the next test will it actually work so I put it I tried it indoors first because if something went crazy with it I didn't want it flying flying off to France <laughs> or wherever China wherever it wanted to go um, so anyway, I've done a practice start inside and it took off, just went in a hover and just sat there as good as gold. And I was quite surprised, to be honest with you, because I had worries about the downward camera, uh, whether that was uh, broken in some way, but it seemed to hold its position okay. And uh, so, yeah, and the motors, they was all working fine. So, yeah, I was well happy about that. Um, so I thought, well, the next test is going to be outside even though it hasn't got the GPS chip on it seemed to work even with the GPS chip off as in work I mean it holds its position by looking through the downward facing camera and then uses the sonar for the height up to uh, I think the old AR drone was something like 20 feet I'm not sure if this would be the same height or higher lower need to look up on that actually but anyway so I took it outside and the video that follows or you're watching now is um, I won't bore you with a whole lot of the video because I was actually testing out a the, the original battery was shot as well it just puffed out so I ripped the cells out of the, the original battery and I had some um, 18 um, 650 batteries which I had used before as a test in my other, my other quadcopter which was a power AR drone too um, and I had put 18650s in that and uh, it seemed to work okay I think I got used to get about new when the batteries are new it was probably about 15 17 minutes flight time from them um, before it landed at zero percent so I thought just out of curiosity I'll put them batteries into you know the original uh, battery casing on this so put them in wired it all up and then done this video that's on now um, there was no telemetry I can put on this because without the GPS chip it doesn't do the telemetry at all not even like the the height or the, the battery percentage or nothing like that on the actual telemetry but anyway so this was just a test to see if the batteries the 18650 batteries would work and I think it ran for 
I'm thinking about maybe 15 minutes uh, before it landed at 0% uh, which I find it's not too bad actually because these batteries have been abused a bit um, but it was a good test anyway um, in my next video what I'm making up for it I've got some LG batteries uh, 3000 milliamp batteries I think they are rated 20 about 20 amp maybe 30 on a burst or something like that I want to try them out see how long I get out of that so that will be in the um, follow up video that I'm going to be doing to this but overall um, the drone's flying working fine now but for anybody else considering buying um, any quadcopter I guess this really applies to that's been in salt water uh, unless somebody's got the battery out of it pretty prompt and then it's been taken somewhere or the owner has thoroughly washed it out with you know best case scenario is, is distilled water but failing that even fresh water to get rid of the salt deposits and then let it dry out because if you just let it dry out on its own it's just going to crow to hell like this one did and it will be 100% beyond the economical repair because if you look at this one to actually get it running now um, it technically needed a brand new board a uh, brand new GPS board um, okay the bearings are not so bad because they're quite reasonable anyway but with the main board and the GPS board you're looking at the price of a, a, a one of these brand new these days so it's definitely not worth a repair on it under normal circumstances if it's just MOSFETs that blow um, it'd probably be worth repairing but um, the actual system they've got in place there for detecting shorts and that seems to I haven't read many people with uh, like blown MOSFETs like the AR drone I mean mine blew I can't remember how many times that went about four five times that blue MOSFETs so I was changing them quite a few times on that um, but this one uh, seems a bit stronger and software protection on the chips themselves I would imagine it's built into the logarithms on it so yeah um, all in all um, as a project it was worthwhile but if you look at if you had to do this buying new parts never be worth it um, but to say on to my uh, next project now with this is to I do have an old uh, GPS board that uses the same chip so what I'm going to try and do is get the chip off of this other board put it back into the GPS board on a Bebop and see if it works so that that will be carried on in my next video along with testing of these LG batteries um, anyway thank you for taking the time to to watch and you all have a nice day take care bye Thank you.